we're going to talk uh, in a little bit more detail about our, our coal operations uh, and uh, our progress over the last year since we last spoke. It's been a, uh, a pretty good year in many respects, um, especially with the, the last quarter price turning up from the, the trend that was happening for the rest of the year. Uh, the three areas that we'll be mainly talking about are growth, productivity and sustainability. We basically need all of these for a, uh, a business that, that takes us into the future and the way we want to go. In terms of where we, we're placed as, uh, as an organisation, this hasn't changed very much. We're still the, uh, the number one producer of steel making coal in, uh, in the continent, uh, number two exporter of steel making coal in the world. We produce around 80% of Canada's steel making coal and we've got about four and a half thousand employees that, uh, that do it for us. One of the real important things with our employees is that we have a commitment to them. We have uh, safety as a core value at tech and our commitment with that, our employees is that we want them all to go home safe and healthy every day. And this is something that we, we talk about every day, we act on every day. We've uh, instituted a program called Courageous Safety Leadership right across tech where everyone is considered a leader in safety and has uh, an obligation and a right to speak up uh, to uh, improve safety for themselves and, and their, their uh, colleagues. We, uh, as you can see from the graph, our trend is positive. That the, the graph shows uh, total recordable injury frequency going down every year and the black at the bottom is the lost time injury frequency rate also going down. So we're, we're very concerned to make sure people don't get hurt. We've also had an increased focus on high potential incidents. These are incidents that did not necessarily result in somebody being hurt, but could have, and that are signals for us to act to change a system or procedure to make sure somebody doesn't get hurt in the future. We've, we're also looking at various technologies that help us out, uh, a particular one, uh, for, for truck drivers who are on a repetitive coal haul, uh, wearing, uh, actually having a, a little camera on the dash, looking at their eyes and seeing when, uh, when their head dips or their eyes uh, shut briefly, warning them that they're, they're uh, potentially fatigued, giving, their, uh, giving an alarm, also alarming their supervisor, and we're able to take action, help people to take a rest, do what's required so they can work safely. This uh, chart is, again, very similar to last year, just emphasises the fact that uh, all in all we have uh, around uh, 6 billion tonnes of coal uh, in our uh, uh, resource base. Uh, about 90% of that is in the Elk Valley, about 10% of that in northern British Columbia. And that's going to keep us going uh, for, for quite a while. Our operations are focused in uh, the bottom uh, eastern corner of British Columbia in the Elk Valley where we have five operations. We're the sole operator of coal operations in that valley. We have our Cardinal River uh, operation in, uh, in Alberta, uh, west of Edmonton, and then our Quintet project a little bit further north in British Columbia. We have uh, a very robust supply chain with uh, two rail networks, CP and CN, serving us. Uh, to uh, take our product to three ports, uh, Ridley, uh, our own Neptune port and, uh, and West Shore. We've seen this slide before. It, it simply shows that we supply steel making coal all around the world. We've been supplying coal for a long time to, uh, to the, the biggest and uh, some of the newest steel makers in the world and they all value our coal for its uh, very good coke making and uh, uh, characteristics. In terms of our growth, we've been investing in uh, essentially a, a, green, a brownfield focused uh, improvement uh, program over the last number of years, uh, coupled with uh, our intention to restart the quintet operation. We've almost reached the, the 28 million tonne capacity uh, rate at our uh, currently operating mines. That's involved increases in our mining fleets, uh, upgrades, renovation of our mining fleets, uh, improvements to our preparation plants, 
some of the infrastructure that supports that. And, uh, and we're in pretty good shape right now. Quintet, as we know, uh, we've been working on permitting that over the last uh, period of time. That's been successful, and I'll, uh, I'll come back to that in, in a moment. So we can see here the, uh, the, the types of investments that, that we've put into uh, keep our business in um, uh, good shape and to grow it in the most economic way possible. And the Brownfields expansion, we've, we've seen that around $100 per annual tonne, uh, incremental tonne, provides us a, a very, very satisfactory way to expand our business compared to some of the acquisitions and, and other ways people have been expanding our business. And, uh, and that's been very effective, uh, re rejuvenating our, our fleets. Um, the other uh, aspect that we have been uh, talking about recently is our management of water, in particular uh, the selenium that's coming from our uh, uh, overburdened dumps, and, and we'll again get back onto that. And we've also uh, put some money, obviously, into the initial stages of, of starting up Quintet. Uh, this, this chart shows a, a demographic of our truck fleet. So over on the uh, right hand side you have old trucks and on the left hand side you have new trucks or young trucks. And their retirement age is about 100,000 uh, hours of operation. You can see that in the, in the grey shading. And you can see that a few years ago we had quite a lot of trucks just about to, to go into retirement. And we've spent a lot of money rejuvenating that fleet. Uh, to the bottom graph where we can see uh, a lot of trucks, uh, our average truck age is now about 28,000 hours, very good shape. The light blue colour shows an increase in truck capacity moving up from 240 to 320 tonne trucks and then the green is moving into the, the 400 truck, truck uh, capacity range and we're going to continue that as we move forward. Of course, when you have bigger trucks, you need uh, larger uh, truck shops to, to put them in. So this one shows Fording River. Uh, it shows 40 years of Fording River. So right at the left-hand side, the little truck shops there are for the 170-tonne the trucks that we had back in those days. And we can see how we've added to the most recent uh, closest truck shop at, uh, at Fording, and that's uh, capable of handling the, the CAT 797 uh, 400 tonne trucks and uh, uh, that really shows that uh, we're keeping pace with the investment required to look after these assets that we're purchasing. Of course our uh, partners in, in our supply chain are, are working with us to make sure that we can successfully deliver our coal to our customers. Tech has uh, a, a few core fundamental strengths that our customers rely on. We have good quality coal, we are reliable, we deliver when we say we will, and we're, we're reasonable uh, about uh, our commercial relationships, uh, and we provide very strong technical support. You put all those things together, it creates a very good partner to work with. So uh, with our rail partners, over the last few years we've generated some, some very good agreements uh, with CP, uh, a 10-year agreement for our uh, westbound traffic, and uh, with CP, uh, a five-year agreement for the traffic uh, further north from our Cardinal River mine and our Quintet mine. Along with these agreements uh, came uh, a commitment to invest in infrastructure, CP in particular, committed to invest uh, uh, around $75, $100 million into improving uh, the line's uh, capacity between our mines, the 1,100 kilometres to the coast, and uh, so a, a number of sidings have been put in. Uh, there's a picture there showing the, uh, a siding right near our Fording River mine, which allows a train to be staged right at the mine so that when a train has been finished loading, another one can immediately go in and that's our largest capacity mine, and, and that's been happening right along the, um, the supply chain. Uh, we've enlarged mine loops so that all of our trains now are 152 cars, so that's a 20% increase in capacity per, per train than we had a couple of years ago. Uh, and we're also cooperating other ways. Uh, 
that the trains at Fording River are now being actually loaded by Fording River personnel. So CP delivers the train to the, uh, to the siding uh, or to the loop, our guys take over, load the train and then CP takes it away. So it's, it's a real win-win uh, for everybody. In terms of our ports, we've been uh, careful to ensure that we have the capacity at the ports to manage our forecast increases in production. Uh, at Neptune, which is uh, our 100% uh, tech-owned coal terminal, we share it with, with Campertex, who manages potash on the other side. Uh, we've invested in uh, increasing capacity to 12.5 million tonnes with a future growth potential to 18 and a half. At West Shore, where we are the largest customer, uh, capacity uh, has been increased from 29 to 33 million tonnes, and they're in the process of taking that to 36. And then at Ridley, which caters for our northern coal, uh, current works are looking at taking that from uh, its prior 12 million uh, tonnes capacity to, to 24. So put that all together and uh, it gives us lots of options. Just a little bit more on Neptune. Uh, the, the first stage of the uh, capacity increase was to put a train positioner in at the dumper to uh, speed up the dumping of trains. That, that took us from seven to nine million tonnes. We've just installed a second stacker reclaimer, which uh, takes the capacity to 12 and a half million tonnes and also allows us to dump trains and to load ships simultaneously, which we couldn't do before. And then we have the uh, ability to uh, uh, get the very most out of, out of the footprint we currently have. So all of our expansions have taken place on the same footprint on, on the North Shore in Vancouver. Uh, we currently have the permit for from uh, Port Metro Vancouver to uh, for Project Allison, which is to go to 18 and a half million tonnes and we're uh, awaiting other, other permitting processes to, uh, b before we move on that one. So I guess the, the sum of all of this is that over the last period of time uh, our, our key metrics have uh, uh, increased. Uh, we've gone through a little bit of a hump of, of strip ratio over the last couple of years and we're now coming into a period where that's going to be fairly smooth for the, for the next 10 years. Uh, but we've seen uh, on the graph on the left the material movement um, increasing to, to, to new uh, historical high levels. Uh, then in the middle the coal production uh, increasing uh, over that period and then uh, coal sales uh, on, the, on the right uh, concluding with our uh, record uh, 7.6 million tonnes sales in uh, in quarter three. And uh, it, it hasn't been an easy year. Uh, we've managed to do this despite some, some setbacks uh, along the way. The first picture shows the uh, birth number one at West Shore, which was uh, impacted by a vessel uh, in December last year. Uh, West Shore did a fantastic job to fix that in about two months and, and got that going again. And then the other two pictures uh, show some f a flooding event in, in June in, the, in uh, the Elk River where some, some rail was washed away. Again, CP reacted very well to get that going very quickly. And, uh, and the other one's the, the Fording River showing uh, how close it got to some of our installations. Uh, it was a one in 600 year event and we uh, came through essentially unscathed. There's, there's some repairs to do in the meantime. But uh, it shows, again, the, the robustness of our operations and our supply chain. Uh, the, the last piece of the, the growth puzzle for now is, is Quintet. And uh, the top picture shows Babcock Mountain, where uh, we intend to start mining again. That was mined for a few years uh, before uh, Quintet shut down. And the bottom picture shows the existing infrastructure, very good preparation plant, uh, rail, load out, uh, power supply, roads, all those sorts of things are in place. And it's in uh, very good shape to restart. Um, so we're looking at, uh, we, we've taken, deferred the decision by a year, we're looking at now potentially mid-2015 starting up production there. 
Um, it's, it's got basically everything, uh, everything required. We've got to do some refurbishment of the uh, uh, processing plant. We've got to uh, put some starter pits in uh, up on the Babcock Mountain. But that has really been uh, an exercise where we have cooperated very much with uh, the First Nations in that area, with the provincial government. Uh, there, was a, there was a real log jam up in northeast British Columbia, which was uh, in response to a judicial challenge uh, about an exploration permit uh, based on the uh, potential destruction of a caribou herd. And that really led to an impasse uh, for development in that area. We worked very much as a facilitator to bring people together to allow that to move forward. And we now have a, a regional, <coughs> excuse me, caribou uh, management and mitigation plan agreed on by all parties and we're moving forward on that and uh, and uh, so that we're actually contributing to getting things moving again up there and uh, our uh, impact benefit agreements with the First Nations are also moving forward so uh, in very good shape to, to start up. Uh, again it's uh, the, the blue bar in the middle showing that uh, the investment in Quintet is uh, a good investment in terms of uh, capital. We are using the, the pause that's been created, I guess, by market conditions to really look at every aspect of the capital spending and just see if we can do things a different way to, to really minimise the, uh, the capital that we use to, to get it started up again. And essentially, it's going to be a, a market-based decision on, on when that happens. In terms of productivity, uh, cost control has really been a very, very heavy focus for us this year. Uh, last year, market conditions weren't great at this time. We, we actually reduced production by about 12% and we said we've got to get our cost down so our unit cost doesn't come, come up while we do that and people work very, very hard at that. Uh, this shows the, um, the overall movement down the cost curve as Don uh, spoke about earlier from a, a being about an 80th percentile down to a, a 40th percentile uh, producer uh, through really looking at every aspect of the business right right through from ensuring that our mine plans were as effective as possible uh, and looking at the efficiency and productivity of, of, of all our uh, uh, operations in particular the, the truck shovel operations where we've got newer uh, more productive gear uh, very good use of dispatch systems which look at each truck cycle and look for ways of taking seconds uh, out of each part of that uh, uh, truck cycle, whether it be travel time or dump time or load time, people working very much together on that. And then the uh, plant modernisation has allowed us to improve yields as well, which reduces the amount of uh, overburden we've got to move for every tonne of coal we produce. So our CRP cost reduction program had originally started as CRP 100. We uh, upped it to CRP 156 and we're well on the way to doing that. Uh, to the end of quarter three, about $109 million uh, banked savings. Uh, about uh, $6 a tonne reduction in uh, unit uh, costs. Uh, truck productivity. Uh, increasing labour productivity in the sense that uh, our folks working to uh, take over work previously done by more expensive contractors, uh, yield improvements, uh, consumables, really looking at consumption, how can we reduce that? The, the whole range of inputs to the uh, process have been looked at. And uh, we can see the, the overall result here. Uh, back in 2008, uh, uh, a focus really on uh, on our expansions through through there for a while, but then the, the real tight focus on on cost uh, reduction uh, over the last uh, couple of years, and, and particularly uh, uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, our guys love coal mining, and uh, we're very very lucky. They, they they love living in the places where they work. The Elk Valley is a beautiful place for those of you who've been there. Uh, it's a great place to go if you like skiing you can go in winter to Fernie if you like summer and you can go fly fishing um, but it's so our guys get pretty passionate about the place and when we put our minds to do something we uh, 
we do a good job of it and we can just see here our safety, our growth and our, our cost uh, management, all features of uh, our activity over the last year or so. We're going to be mining there for a long time. As I say, the people love the place they work. We uh, have an obligation to our communities to, to uh, look after the environment, uh, the water in particular, and we're going to be there for a long, long time so that we've got to have uh, methodologies in place that keep uh, the environment in the shape that we want it. Tech has a sustainability philosophy which has six key areas, the ones we can see there, are people, community, water, biodiversity, energy and a material stewardship. Energy efficiency is something very important, biodiversity, our, our caribou efforts up at uh, Quintet were very much in line with that philosophy. Our water efforts in uh, the Elk Valley are very much in line with uh, what we're doing to, to manage our water. We want our, our water to be uh, fishable, drinkable and swimmable. And uh, so a lot of people are pretty interested in that aim. And as you can see, we've got the uh, watershed of the, the Elk River it actually starts further north at the Fording River, flowing into the Elk River, uh, flowing into the Kootenai River and then down into the US, USA, into uh, Lake Kukanusa. We are the only operator in that region, only mining operator, so we have a responsibility to, to look after that watershed. Uh, what, what we've seen is that over time uh, a very small quantity of selenium has leached out of our overburdened dumps into the rivers. They are now uh, at higher uh, selenium concentrations than the water quality guidelines. So the uh, provincial government asked us to develop an area-wide plan, which we're doing. Uh, we've completed the terms of reference and we now are working with a range of stakeholders over the next uh, year to uh, complete that plan which will give us water quality guidelines right down that river system um, in, in uh, consultation with a wide group of stakeholders including uh, community members, uh, First Nations members, both sides of the border uh, and environmental regulators both sides of the border. We've already started work on this, we've just about completed our first water treatment plan. We've said that we expect to spend about $600 million over the next five years on instituting water management measures. The first one of those is the Lion Creek water management, uh, water treatment plant, which is almost uh, structurally complete and uh, will be up and running in uh, the second quarter next year. The uh, management of water is, is mainly going to be through water treatment. We also have uh, a number of diversions around our operations where we keep clean water clean is one of the fundamentals of, uh, of water management. And it will see our, our operating costs uh, increase uh, about $1.50 a tonne by, uh, by year five and then um, up, to a, up to potentially $6 a tonne uh, uh, much further out than that. Uh, we're currently operating with a known technology which has been proved successful in the United States. Uh, we, our first plant is using that technology. We're also using the uh, capabilities of Tech's uh, Applied Research and Technology Group to do a funnel and filter process where we're looking at all applicable technologies and what are the ones that we could use to actually get those numbers down, both capital and uh, operating numbers down and there are uh, quite a few good possibilities out there, but that's what we've put out there for, for the sake of conservatism. I guess uh, we've always got to remember what we are producing. At, at the end of the day, steel making coal does uh, produce many of the things that we take for granted that we think are part of a, a future, su uh, a sustainable future. Uh, there's a photo there of the, uh, the Canada, Canada line in uh, in Vancouver, which uh, requires 30,000 tonnes of coal to produce, and, and a wind turbine, which uh, consumes about 100 tonnes of uh, coking coal. So summarising, um, we're, we're obviously the, uh, a leading uh, 
high quality steel making coal producer. We're uh, operating close to current capacity now. We did slow down for that market dip, but we've seen uh, things improve. Uh, our sales uh, in the first half of the year were about 12.8 million tonnes. Uh, we expect to exceed that uh, significantly in the second half of the year, and we're gearing up to, to make sure that we can produce that capacity next year. With uh, Quintet coming online, we're able to grow to over 30 million tonnes a year. We're going to focus on maintaining and, if possible, improving our place on the, on the cost curve. Uh, management of capital is, is a key focus for us uh, in, in the way we're rethinking what we can do at Quintet. Are there, are there other ways to start that up? And, of course, sustainable mining is, uh, is a cornerstone for us and, and uh, very, very important for, for our future. So thanks, and uh, very happy to take any questions you may have. Great, thanks very much, Ian. Uh, a question about the uh, your costs in coal. So, on page 24, it shows that uh, you've realized 109 million savings so far. How much is the of the 330 total company wide? How much of that 330 is attributable to coal? I.e., how much is left to go still on coal? It's about 50%. It's, it's sort of proportional to our revenue. So, okay. so we, we basically decided that everybody had to get in this together and, uh, and work together on reducing their costs. And so we've been sharing the way we do that right around the company. So we have regular calls where all those who have a truck and shovel set up use uh, the improvements that have been made at another mine for their own benefit. And uh, we do that uh, for uh, issues to do with uh, grinding mills, truck shovel, all, all those sort, sorts of things. Okay, do, now, does that imply that there's another $6 a tonne of savings to come on your coal cash costs? Uh, no, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't imply that. Um, some of that was already factored into our budgets this year. And that's cumulative costs. So these costs accumulate over time. So we would be expecting to save around $156 million per annum at the conclusion. So that's about $6 a tonne, if you like. Okay. Thank you. On the uh, water management and selenium issues, um, why was Lion Creek chosen uh, as the first mine uh, to be developed uh, with this technology? And, and is it the fact that it's as one of the smaller mines uh, is there not a track record of scalability uh, with the existing technologies, which, which is a factor? Mm. No, it was actually uh, dictated by permitting requirements. We, we really haven't done a lot of permitting over the last decade in coal. And as each of our mines goes through its current mine plan and extends to a new footprint, uh, the province requires that we put in either a, a Mines, Act per, uh, Mines Act permit amendment or uh, an environmental assessment. So we, we basically are working through. So Lion Creek simply was the first uh, cab off the rank. Uh, it also happened to have a, uh, w one of the largest sources of selenium, if you like. So it, it was a, a very logical place to put that first plant. Uh, the second one is going to go in at Fording River, and that uh, is uh, part of Fording River's new, new permit which will extend Fording River's uh, mining territory further north. And uh, that will be a somewhat larger plant, but using similar technologies and all the learnings coming off that first plant. We've appointed a, a program manager who's going to be looking at this, this program of uh, plants that's going to roll out over the, over the next 10 years. Hi, Ian. Meredith, Hi. Meredith Banning from BMO. Another question about selenium. I heard there was recently a coal conference up in Tumbler Ridge, and there were some exciting developments in terms of new technology for selenium that would be perhaps cheaper. Is that something that tech has looked at, and is there any new news there to share? There's, there's no news except that we're aware of 15 or 20 technologies that are out there that are in various stages of development from uh, 
University of Alberta, uh, chemical lab, through to General Electric, through to a little company in Vancouver. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot out there. We've, we've got inquiries out in Japan, uh, worldwide basically. Um, so we're pretty abreast with uh, all sorts of um, practical and developed on one hand and less practical and less developed on the other hand that could be of interest to us further out. So we're really keeping a very wide scouting uh, function going. Um, can you remind us of the costs for Quintet, the operating costs, and if we're six months in the future in April, Met Coal is still the same price, would you say the project would, would be a no-go or would it depend on what your views in April about the forward prices? And I'm just trying to get an idea mm, of mm, what the kind mm. of threshold is on the go, no-go on that project. Yeah, well, uh, Quintet is sort of in the mid-range mid of, of our uh, cost curve. It won't really change us where we are on the cost curve. It's not the lowest cost, it's not the highest cost. It has a decent margin at uh, what we think are the likely long-term coal prices and uh, we'll be looking for, I guess, more signals from the market, I guess, that, that we're closer or moving steadily towards those longer-term prices before we uh, move on it. Hi, Ian. Um, I just wanted to, you know, clarification. I think you stated that your material movement, i.e. your stripping ratio over the next 10 years is going to be fairly stable? Yeah. So should we be looking at something relatively similar to the last fourth quarters, or what's what's the uh, the number that we should be expecting to see? Yes, we, we did go, if, if uh, on, on page 26, we did go through a little bit of a hump in strip ratio last year. So what we've got this year is, is a little bit more typical. It, it's around 10 to 1. In, in, uh, in BCMs per tonne of clean coal. Hey, Ian. Um, Rayal mentioned earlier that uh, some steel makers are opting for lower quality coals right now, especially those operating at, at, at a lower margin. If you were able to find, you know, completely brand new customers for your Quintet uh, product without cannibalizing any of your existing markets or any existing clients, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the, 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 the realized price you would get for Quintet would be on average a little bit lower than yeah. for your other operations. Yeah. Would you consider, you know, even at that point in time, if my, my coal prices haven't really gone up, but they're maybe around where they are, you know, advancing on the project on that basis? Mm. We, we certainly w wouldn't be advancing on Quintet if we thought there was any possibility that it was going to cannibalize our other operations. That, that wouldn't make any sense at all. Uh, what we see it doing is extending the, the suite of products. We, m most of our coal is hard coking coal. Coal Mountain produces a PCI coal. Um, Cardinal River's a little bit different and uh, Quintet's a little bit different, as you said, uh, a little bit more than 10% discount on headline prices. Uh, so we're looking for the, the range of customers that, that want each of those coals. And uh, really, every customer is different. They, they all have their own recipes due to where they're sourcing the, the rest of their blend coals. So, you, you know, we have, we have some customers that, that are happy with 35% in their blend, others that like 15% in their blend. So it's, uh, our marketers have been out there looking at, at the possibilities and we'll be advancing uh, that to, to make sure that we do have sales for Quintet. Uh, 